Hello everyone, this is a beginner's guide for DCS. I would like to update this in the future as more features get added. But for now, we're just going to cover the current state of DCS in 2022. Also, make sure you look at the bottom of this video. I have it broken up into chapters since I have a lot of different topics I would like to get into. The first topic is what modules should, should you get? Well, that's easy. I would always recommend F18. The F18 is a great, great start. Most people just tell you grab the Hornet and that's because the Hornet is very easy to taxi. It's very easy to land. Like it's so easy because the landing gear on the Hornet is very tough because it has the support carrier landings. That's why I think that's just some of the reasons. I also did mention there's also a lot of modules, a lot of story modules. There's Rising Squall. Rising Squall is basically I would say Rising Squall is, it reminds me of Ace Combat or something like Project Wingman. It's very nice story campaign. It will help you get your feet wet in DCS. It's got the cool factor going for it. You see it in movies. Most recently it was in Top Gun movie. For free, Eagle Dynamics gave us the skin for the F-18 as well. So you have the whole cool factor going for the F-18 module. It's a really great module to pick up. Right now, it's on sale. That's one of the reasons I want to go ahead and make this video right now because we have the Steam Summer Sale going on. And me, I'm always looking for a good deal. So for the price of the F-18, it's a steal. I think that's, it really is a steal. And that's my favorite module. I have a lot of different jets, a lot of different choppers, other modules in DCS, but that's by far my most used module. I fly it all the time. I fly it over the F-14, I fly it over the F-16, I fly it over the Vigan, the Hind, the Apache. That's my favorite module by far, just not close. Next topic DCS standalone so a lot of people what they do is they move on to DCS standalone from the steam edition and the reason why is because the standalone edition has 14 day trials take a drink there so there's 14 day trials and this is unparalleled I have not seen this feature anywhere else out of all the games let me know in the comment if you know of any other games that has like 14 day trial period. So for any module, you can test it out for 14 days. That's crazy. It's definitely, that's, that's amazing. I'm so glad that he added this. It's been active for a few months now. You can easily just go to the, to the ED website, click on the module. As long as the module hasn't been like it as long as it's not brand brand new module so i think after modules been in play for like three months like i i think most recently the apache they just added that so you can go trial that out so any module and that should keep you busy for the longest and that's one of the things as a new player should take advantage of that all right next topic where do you go for tutorials this might be funny coming from someone that loves to post up videos, but I'm going to just lay it out for you. Chuck's PDF guy. That's like my first stop. Actually, uh, really might be my second stop. First stop might be Wags. Check him out. So he's an ED, ED employee and he'll give you information about a feature before it comes out. So he'll post up a video like most recently. He put up a video about the, the talls that was added recently for the hornet for instance basically wags is one of my first stop and i'll make sure i'll link to him 
but my second stop is Chuck's PDF Guide. And it's very nice. You can just quickly reference whatever you need to learn for your jet. It's amazing. Next, one of my next topic is like, where do you start in DCS? One of the things that I do in DCS, one of the first things that I do is like, I make sure I can like code start. There's a key binding for that. And I have voice attack also, so for any plane, I can just tell voice attack to just start my plane and it'll automatically go through the script and then just start up the plane for me. So really one of the things you want to focus on, like co-start is important, but not for the reason, in my opinion, for the reason you might think it is. The most important reason that I like to do co-start it's mostly so I can learn where things are in the cockpit. And every module pretty much comes with a co-star tutorial. So that's one of the first places you will want to go to, I would say. All right, so we're looking at co-star, taxi, and landing. And that's why I mentioned the F-18 at the beginning because it excels at all of that stuff. Like for instance, the F-16, the taxi, it's very easy to tip that thing over when you're starting out. Also, it can be difficult to learn how to land the F-16. So that's another reason I always recommend start out with the F-18. I would like to say a 14 maybe, but really, the F-18 just has so much going for it with the, the huge wealth of single player campaigns. The only other module that has more campaigns is the A-10. That's, that's basically one of the things you can start, like you, that should keep you busy for a little bit, is just learning how to taxi, take off, and just look at the procedure, like you look at Chuck's PDF guide, like It'll mention things like adjusting your flaps, stuff like that. Also, of course, you want to watch your speed during takeoff because you can damage your, your landing gear. Next topic is mods. This is kind of sticky because there is some free mods for DCS. Like you have the A4 module, which doesn't. And what I mean is it doesn't have any prerequisites. So it doesn't require anything else. It's completely free. The A4 Skyhawk. So definitely grab that one. You have the Black Hawk. Also, there's a Hercules. And that's just at the top of my head. Many of the other modules, though, they require the FC3 Flaming Cliffs module as a base. So that's something to watch out for. A lot of mods, they use, they rely, they reuse basically components from FC3. And the nice thing about Flaming Cliffs is it's easy to start up all of those uh, modules that's in FC3. Basically all of those chests is in there. Also, there's a clickable mod that I mentioned previously. Make sure you check out the clickable mod. Not everything's fully clickable. You don't get the response. So what I mean is you don't get a visual response where you don't see the switch move up and down, unfortunately. I don't even think it even highlights. You will, so that's a tricky thing. Make sure you check out my video because I go through CoStar, which will save you time. You don't have to go on a search mission trying to find all the different switches, like what's clickable, what's not. I already already did that groundwork so all you gotta do is just go open up that video go to the chapter and go where you want to do go where you want to go so the next topic what do players do in dcs because there's nothing really to grind for right there's no how do you say it? there's no hamster wheel like in a game like war thunder or other games like that you're constantly grinding for stuff, right? You're constantly trying to unlock stuff. In DCS, you don't have a wheel like that. So that can be really daunting. So I think 
a lot of players, we come from games where you have stuff to strive for. And you look at a BCS, which is a sim, right? It's, so it's not trying to be like a game in that aspect where you're constantly grinding and you're constantly unlocking stuff. There's no concept of that here. Now, the closest thing you might have is players can run their own servers, right? Basically, one of the things that players can do then is you can hop on a server. And some servers, they're persistent. And there's little goals that you can accomplish. But that gets wiped eventually, right? Because the server is going to reset. But that, that's the closest you can get to grinding. So what do players focus on in DCS then? Well, one of the things I'll focus on is trying to master various elements, elements of my module. So that's like takeoff, landing, and then of course you'll move on gradually into weapons from there. You kind of, you're constantly learning and that's the grind. You're constantly trying to learn something new for your modules. And there's, there's new mods coming out too every now and then. That keeps me busy. I'm always coming back to the Hornet. And these modules, they keep evolving, right? Like ED, they're adding various things to the modules. And that's another thing to watch out for. And that's why I mentioned the F-18. That's one of the modules that's currently in development. And what I mean is, there's a roadmap that you can check out. But ED, they're, they're trying to get the F-18 and to like out of the beta state it comes with it but it's already a very complete module it's funny like they added the talls and i'm like that's awesome that that opens up some things however the f-18 was already feeling really great so everything that they do is like gravy another thing that these six players do we make our own missions that was that really helps me ramp up on a new module. So what I do is like I'll open up Chuck's PDF, like I mentioned before. And if I want to work on a mastering a Pacific weapon or something like that, what I do is like I'll set up a quick little mission. And that's one of the first things you want to do is learn how to use a mission editor where you at least learn how to place your plane you also want to learn how to like put down targets and maybe put like smoke around it like smoke effects so that's one of the things you want to do next topic why would you pick dcs over something else well you could play dcs alongside other things like but however in my case i i like dcs a lot because I have the freedom to use my peripherals, like I can use my hoda stick, I can use my rudder pedals, I can use all of my equipment. I love buying equipment for sims and basically just try and learn and that's what's great. That's why, in my opinion, that's my personal reason why I chose DCS over others because I'm constantly, constantly learning about other jets. I consider it very educational. I feel that the modules, like the vast majority of them, like the jets and stuff, they're very reasonably priced. And I'm comparing that to other sims and games I've played. It's very, very reasonable. Like for instance, the F-18, you don't have to go crazy and buy a bunch of modules, right? All you really, like you can get hundreds and hundreds of hours. Like I own multiple modules, but I'm telling you, the vast majority of my time is, I treat the F-18 as study level. What I mean is where I'm just trying to learn every major aspect of it. And I've been playing almost two years now and there's still things I don't, I have not used in this jet. And that's one of the reasons why I love BCS. Next topic. VR or head tracking? I use both. 
However, for most players, this is a tough one because I love VR. It's very immersive. It's amazing. There's a but though. Currently in DCS, and I mentioned this before, but right now, multi-core support is not really using all of the cores in the CPU. And in its performance, we could really use some more buffs. I would say we could use some buffs in VR. I made some videos, a lot of different videos where I was playing in VR. And I basically threw my wallet at my computer. I have currently the best graphics card on the market. I don't have the best CPU on the market though, but I have a very, very good CPU. But on average, I'm only getting like around, it depends on where I have my headset set. But let's say if I set it to like 72 Hertz, I might only be getting like 36 FPS. 36 FPS on average. I would say that could be single player, multiplayer. That's where I'm at. And that's using, I'm also using VR Perf Kit. It's basically in summary for this topic, if you have to choose, then you might want to just go with head tracking. A lot of people love track IR. I personally use Toby. That's what I, that's just what I use. I like Toby. However, a lot of people like track IR. That's basically an option for any budget. I always say like if you have a cell phone, there's different head tracking solutions you can use for a cell phone. Plus another reason, like if you want to, there's little things, right? Like, like all the time you want to have a, you're looking at Chuck's PDF. Maybe a lot of us look at Chuck's PDF guide. So now there is mods and there's something called a me board. That's something you should look into. You want to get a knee board for DCS. Basically, like for instance, I have the F-18. Basically for any module, you want to find a knee board for that module and use that knee board. Let's say in conclusion here, I do find myself using head tracking a lot. I go back and forth, even though VR is more immersive. Hopefully this video was very helpful. And if you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if there's something I could have done better or if there's some important detail that you feel might be helpful to beginners. Thanks for watching. That's it.